What's up folks? This is another CompTIA practice test video where Jeremy and I are going to try our luck at getting a score higher than our previous score, which uh, in my case was like mid C range. I think it was like a 76 or something. That is just abysmal. I definitely did not just throw on a hoodie and Greg did not totally just change shirts. Today is several weeks later. Now that you mention it, ah, it's, it's, been, it's been a good while. A few minutes, I think. Uh, Yeah, it's just the nature of YouTube. Anyway, uh, we're going to start off with another practice test here. And question number one is already a doozy because I don't think I know the answer <laughs> to it. I, I, I don't know. Let's give it a shot. Are you ready? Hey, man, listen, money's been tight for us. <laughs> Wait, that's how you're going to that's how you're going to cue in our sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, stay with us. The Be Quiet Purebase 500DX is an excellent mid tower optimized for maximum hardware support and performance. With three included 140mm Pure Wings 2 fans, along with a perforated front panel, you'll experience some of the best airflow in the business. And subtle RGB accents never hurt anything. Choose between black and white and soak in your build through clear tempered glass. Take it from me, you won't be disappointed. Learn more about the Purebase 500DX from Be Quiet by clicking the link below. So let's jump into that first question. Um, I don't know, man. A postcard. Uh, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Uh, is used for troubleshooting computer startup problems. That sounds like a pretty valid answer choice. Terminates the I, SCSI chain. Allows for testing connector pins on the NIC port. Is used in biometric authentication. It's a shot in the dark for me. I think I'm, I'm going, gonna go with number I'm going one. Two. You're going, I'm going two? two? Don't ask me why. I'm just going with it. Okay. Here we it go. It sounds like it's making it skip a process. Uh, post. I know what a post. Like when a system posts. Like, that's. I mean, I know what that is. So I think that has to do with troubleshoot. I don't know. Number two. Which of the following is a common solution for BIOS time and setting resets? CMOS battery replacement. Right? Because if your battery yeah. dies, that's your internal clock. That's what keeps the clock constant when your system's powered mm -hmm. off. So I think that's the answer there. Uh, which of the following could help when troubleshooting a system that attempts to boot to an incorrect device? Mm. I'll let you answer this one, Jeremy. You're going to go <laughs> and you're going to check your BIOS settings. You're going to go to your boot order. So that's that's definitely it. And then nice. you're going to want to disconnect disconnect any thumb drives nice and good on you for reading the very end of that question select two answers because i totally would have missed that just like in the last test uh but you are exactly right my friend the usb device booting uh, is an issue and then changing boot order all righty next question possible causes for continuous system reboot loops might include uh, overheating does this mean we can choose more than one answer there's all of the above, baby. Oh, there is. Misconfigured OS, corrupt OS, hardware failure. Oh, it's definitely all of the above. Yep. Yep. All right. Question five. I'm feeling pretty good about the first few questions so far. Yep, I think yep. we're on a good track. When PC components are not getting enough power, common fixes include disconnecting all extraneous peripheral devices that might be putting too much load on the power supply unit, reseeding the PSU cable connectors inside the computer case, and using a PSU tester to check if the power supply is working properly. This is like a troubleshooting question. Um, true or false? Sounds pretty true to me. Sounds like yeah. whoever in this hypothetical really knows what they're doing. Yeah, are we seeing the PSU cable connectors? Uh, yeah, this, uh, to me, that makes sense. I would say true. All right. Question six. Which of the following might be caused by excessive dust buildup inside? Okay, if I don't get this one right, I'm going to be crucified in the comments. Uh, you could have overheating issues. Mm -hmm. You could have unexpected shutdowns, mm -hmm. intermittent device failures, continuous reboots. Can All dust can dust cause a system to reboot? If it's overheating, it would reboot, right? True, but is that I mean, it a, might just be overheating? That's an effect or a cause? Or like, you see what I'm saying? Like, is that a, it's yeah, like a cause yeah. and effect type thing here? I don't know. I've never heard of a it's system rebooting because of dust, but I wouldn't put it past some some PCs I've seen that they're just caked. Why am I getting blue screens? Maybe because your system looks like it came out of like, yeah, yeah. out of a coffin or something uh i've got every newspaper for the last 10 years and for whatever reason my computer reboots <laughs> this is because <laughs> your house is dirty <laughs> this is a this is a problem i don't i don't really know what to I'm going overheating just overheating yep uh, i'm gonna go all the above i'm just gonna i'm gonna cover my bases wrong <sighs> wrong i could wrong, be okay i could be i'm gonna say it though 
All right, here we go. Which hardware components need attention when the issue symptoms on a failing system include loud noises from the inside of a computer case? <laughs> it's just screaming at you. There's something wrong Ooh. here. I don't think uh, RAM modules would be one of those. It's, it could be a hard disk drive because yep. that's got spinning disks. Cooling fans could be that. Uh, analog modem? I don't think so. SSD. PSC cams has a fan in it. No right? moving parts. Yeah, power supplies usually have moving fans in them. So, I, yeah, I would say two, three, and six. Really. Can they do the squealing thing too? What? Power supplies? Can't they make like a weird squealing noise? Uh, you could have some, um, yeah, coil whine and things, but I'm not sure that's what they're referring to. I think the loud noises are like the bearings and fans going out, and then mm -hmm. obviously the, the discs being scratched or whatever inside of a hard disk drive. All right, next question. The blue screen of death in Microsoft Windows provides technical information that might help advanced users to determine the cause of stop error. Information typically displayed on the screen for this type of error includes an error code, the memory address where it occurred, and the name of the driver that caused it. I think that's true. Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, it would make sense for all those things to be there. Pinwheel is an informal term used for describing stop errors in... Oh god, I don't know. I, I only know Windows. I, I've never heard of Pinwheel. It's a, it's a Mac OS. It sounds like Mac OS. Because but... it has the colorful one. Oh, it's, ah, yeah. Okay. I guess... Yeah. I guess that's I guess that's it. I'll take your word on it. Which of the following actions might solve the problem of leaking burst bulge capacitors inside a computer case? Which might solve the problem? Like replacing the motherboard. Like, yeah, no duh. <laughs> like what? Central we processing need two. We need unit? Two. Uh so yeah, it's good call. We need two. So what components have capacitors? Like physical capacitors. You can see bulging, leaking. Okay, I'm gonna say the bottom two. Here we go. Disk Fragmenter is a software tool used to rearrange data on magnetic drives in order to improve system performance. Defragmentation results in faster read-write operations on the magnetic drive's read-write heads because defragmentation consolidates data into the smallest contiguous regions. This means that the heads can access data sequentially without seeking data fragments. Oh, that sounds like very, very true. Um, <laughs> that guy knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, that sounds... A very elaborate false question. <laughs> yeah, a very specific <laughs> false question, right? Uh, next one, an actuator arm assembly failure manifested by loud clicking emitted from the inside of a computer case uh, is a problem symptom that should prompt for, that's going to be a hard disk replacement, right? So, uh, yeah, first answer. It's not two, it's not three. Faulty primary what's with, storage yeah, module? What's up with that one? What that's the same it? answer. Kind, I mean, kind what of. Is primary. Does it say primary in the question? How would you know if it was the primary drive or not? What if you it's would've. the secondary drive? Yeah, it's too specific. I think it's the first choice. Yeah. All right, moving on. Question 13, halfway there. Self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology, SMART, enables monitoring a system for anticipated... Oh, uh, I should know this because this is a setting in the BIOS. I don't know this um, one. I think it's hard disk drive failures. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's it's SMART, like SMART storage. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen smart, smart and storage in the same lines before okay. in a in a bio. So I'm gonna go with hard disk drive failures. Yep. Uh, let's see. The most common and simplest reasons that a computer monitor is unable to display a screen image include. Okay. Uh, a bad LCD display. That doesn't seem too far fetched. And then. Oh, this is dumb. Loose dude. cable connections. What are you? All of these could be, man. It could be loose wrong in no. It says the simplest wrong input selection and loose cable connection. You got to start with the freaking layer one, baby. Uh, layer one. You yeah, always see, go layer one see, first. See, you you've got that that test taking mentality. I, I've just been so far out of it. I think you're right. Uh, so yeah, wrong Lewis input. Not all, baby. And uh, it's, it, it's it really what it comes down to. I think is attention to detail. Like you're reading like keywords in the question that allow you to narrow down the answers they're looking for. Anyone yeah. who's taken a CompTIA test, like there, you're not looking for the the answer you think is the best. You really have to look for like keywords. Yeah. So yeah, two and four, right? Uh, yeah, because mm -hmm. backlight failure is the same thing as bad LCD display. Basically, that's kind of redundant too. 
All right, moving on, question 15. The term stuck pixel refers to a tiny spot on an LCD monitor display that permanently remains black when it should be activated and displaying color. Mm, that's um, dead pixel, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, a stuck pixel is when it's displaying one type of color. Like if it's like displaying red or green or blue, or something like that. It's stuck yeah. on a color, it's not stuck off. Off is dead, that's that's false. Let's go with, let's, yeah, let's go false. Yeah. Next one, a dim display on a laptop LCD screen might indicate there's a problem with the backlight, right? Yep. Yeah. Any? And then, oh, two answers, two answers. Almost missed it. Oh, Almost missed inverter it. maybe. Yeah. Because the inverter goes to the yeah, because dim screen as we learned in the last video. But yeah, yeah, we learned that from the last one <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that's the power running to the yeah the, the DC to AC again for the screen, I guess. So, yeah, and the others don't make any sense. Let's move on. 17. Which of the following is the name of a permanent computer display screen discoloration caused by displaying the same static image? That's burn it. Yeah, definitely yep. burn it. That's an easy one. Someone was telling me that these new OLED TVs get really bad burn in. Uh, that was a thing with some... So, yeah, a lot of TVs um, that... A lot of TVs with plasma technology got burning really bad like plasma tvs burn it really bad if you leave but a... someone was telling me at work that they like there's like the six thousand dollar brand new tv that burns in well look your most phones now are oled screens like is your phone stuck with burn in like not no. really it, it's it's not as common as it used to be i used to have old oled amoled phones that have burning on them uh, but it took usually a year or two for that to happen now if i took one of like my lg oled if i just left like the news on you know how they have the news ticker on the bottom if i just left that tv on for like a month straight like i'm sure there'd be some burn in there because it's the same basic image just kind of this is glued it's in. 2022 how is this uh, how is burning even still a thing i know I, yeah and we haven't found a cure for cancer either uh, which of the following actions may help when troubleshooting a non-responsive touchscreen on a mobile device? <laughs> uh, non-responsive touchscreen. Reseating the device's battery. <laughs> Just unplug it and plug it back in. Erasing all content settings and restoring the device to factory Three. defaults. Three. Pressing a specific key combination to perform a system restart. Removing screen protector and cleaning screen. D, right? Mm, I don't know. I'm going three. I mean, like, is the device stuck? Fro like, is it frozen? Like, some kind of software lockup? Because then, yeah, it's software non responsive. Reset if it's non responsive, it could be because, yeah, there's like dust under, especially if you have like a screen no. protector on or if no, you have gloves on. Started. What do you do if your phone freezes, Greg? <sighs> do, you, do you clean your screen? <laughs> No. <laughs> if you're like, dude, my phone's frozen. And then you wipe that off, I'd make fun of you. Okay, all right, good point. Pressing a specific key combination button to perform. Yeah, and this is for mobile phones, right? Yeah, mobile device. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I probably look really stupid there. Let's see. Which of the following would help ensure proper reassembly of a serviced mobile device? Hmm. Using appropriate Using hand appropriate tools. Hand. That's for sure. Documenting and labeling screws and locations. Yep. A magnetic mat, that's for sure. Uh, removing dust buildup inside the device case. Uh, yeah, I guess. Manufactured documentation uses a reference. All right, yeah. I'll do all of them. We all, of all of them? What about the dust buildup, though? Is that going to affect your ability to reassemble it? I don't know if it's blocking something from going back yeah, in. That's what I, yeah, I, I guess. I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Uh, in laser printing, oh my god, I'm not gonna... Here we oh, go. <laughs> Jesus. Long vertical streaks on each output page indicate a problem with... I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna go printer calibration, I have no clue though. Long vertical streaks on each output page. A clogged print head nozzle? Why would you have... Uh, damage to the imaging drum. Printer driver. Don't even act like you're like know any of this stuff dude hey, come on i can i can try all right i, I can dream i think it's going to be damage to the imaging drum because if it was if it wasn't calibrated correctly then wouldn't it just like Bro. misalign and stuff when's the last time canon printer's been like hey greg we want to do a video <laughs> i don't know they're not going to want to make a video with me after this one seeing how little i know about these uh printers which of the following printer problems may be caused by depleted toner 
faded printouts. That's definitely one of them. Garbled characters on printer output pages. Mm -hmm. Is that... Yeah. No. Ghost images. That sounds like what it would be. Right? Um, I think that's for... I think that's like a drum thing, because I think that's like when the... the well, we're not talking about just laser printers, right? This is any printer. Any any printer with the... Tongue. I think that's when, like, the a ghost image is like a separate image is printed on your... Well, paper. it's like a... Yeah, it's like, an, like a previous... Yeah, yeah from I a don't, previous print page. I don't think depleted toner would do that. Printing blank pages, that sounds like one. And then vertical streaks. Oh my gosh, there come the vertical streaks again. I'm going to one and one and four, dude. One and four? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Twenty-two. Which step of the laser printer imaging process? God dang it. Requires troubleshooting. <laughs> Don't call oh, either of us to fix your freaking printer, that's for sure. Yeah. Requ requires troubleshooting if a printer produces ghost images. Ah, oh, on output pages. Um, cleaning, I think cleaning maybe? Or the exposing process. Like on, like I know like with photos, if it's like, if the image is like from an exposure's, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, wait, wait, wait. So doesn't the printer like charges? It charges the dude. Thing then... You're talking to the wrong guy. I have no clue. I have a freaking basic HP printer in there. I think it. I think it charges with uh, electricity, right? And then the ink sticks to it, where where the chargers are. Yeah, and yeah. It's the, magnetic ink, the, right? Yeah, I think I think it might be charging. <laughs> I don't know. All That's right, like, I'm going with charging. It's better guess than I had. <laughs> Uh, 23. Oh, dang it. In laser printing, toner <laughs> falling off of a printed copy indicates a problem with the following. Toner cartridge? What? I don't even understand the question. Uh, yeah. I, oh. I'm just going to confess something right now. I have no clue what toner even is. I just know that people need toner replaced in printers, but I don't know what it is or what it does. <laughs> I think it's the, it, well, it is like the ink, right? But I think it's I guess, the one that uh, is magnetically charged to the paper. So if toner falls off, then there's a problem with the toner cartridge, right? <laughs> Which has the ink in it, if that's what we're, uh, if that's what it is. I'm going to go fuser assembly, but you can go with whatever you want. I'm going toner cartridge. I'm going to go with the, the obvious. All right. uh, I don't know. All right. Garbled characters on output page. Dude, why are we getting slammed? Oh Absolutely this is why slammed I was with printer say questions. This is why I failed. Dude, this is why I failed. I was doing because I was like, I know about computers, and I went in and I was like, thirty printer questions. <laughs> so bad. Uh, garbled characters on output pages may indicate a printing problem related to which of the following? Garbled characters. I'm not even gonna bother trying to think these through. Well. I, I legit don't. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. IPv4 address within the range of one six nine two five four zero one through one six nine two five two five five two five four indicates a problem with what type of service? Uh, DNS. Shot in the dark here. I'm not a network guy. I don't know. This. You should know oh, this. Oh wait, it's a. Uh, it's DHCP. DHCP. Okay. <laughs> Just learn this, baby. <laughs> I just learned this in CCNA. I'm pretty sure it's one that D the. Do you know what DHCP, DHCP stands for? Yes, it's a domain dynamic, hosting or dynamic. Domain, domain. Dynamic. I don't know. I used to hosting know something protocol. I don't know. Yeah. So. Dynamic host controller protocol. That sounds. <laughs> That sounds legit. Right. I should know this. <laughs> I don't know. That. I should, this is the one I'm actually gonna get roasted for. In the <laughs> All right, so let's click finish here and see. How bad we did! This is not gonna be good. Oh, the first one we missed. <laughs> oh, let's go down to the bottom here. Uh oh dude! We got an 85. I got an 86? Oh, I got an 80. I feel like you're definitely Dude! I I literally got so lucky on that. Like <laughs> you saved my butt on at least a few questions. Cause there's no way I did that on my own. There's no way. We got all these beginning questions right, including that postcard thing about troubleshooting computer startup. I got that one. So that's the one you missed, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then let's see the next one. Which of the following actions might solve the problem of leaking bulk capacitors? So... They wanted a capacitor replacement in motherboard. They're assuming yeah. that there's only capacitors on motherboards. Uh... I don't, yeah, that question was dumb. I, I got capacitor replacement right, though. And you got motherboard replacement right, didn't you? Yeah, so, I did. So we each got one right on that one. Oh, two. Um, it says leaking, or it could be leaking inside a computer case. So maybe they meant, like, 
Because it's exposed, like in a power supply, yeah. it's closed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's closed off. Which of the following actions may help when troubleshooting a non-responsive touchscreen? Uh, we said pressing a specific key combination to perform a soft reset. Dude, you gave me so much crap for this question. <laughs> You get you guilted me. It is a dumb answer. No, That's a you, dumb answer. You guilted me into not selecting four. Granted, I still would have been wrong here, but you told me that there was no yeah, way me. that anyone was gonna swipe on Let their me just screen. Go reseat the battery on my it modern off Samsung phone. If it's locked up, I'm just saying an impression that you might get when the screen isn't responding is that okay, maybe I'm not touching it correctly. Maybe there's something preventing the screen from picking up my touch. That was why I thought that. I also could see how it could be answer three, like we said, reseating a device's battery is a bit of a barbaric take. That's like early 2000s fixing there, but uh, I guess. And then erasing all content settings and restoring the device to factory default. <laughs> It's probably all the picture of my family. That's probably what's causing it. I should remove it. Yeah, get rid of all your precious family pics. They want you to nuke your whole device if your screen freezes. Dude, I, I don't see that as being a solution. I guess it's like scorched earth mentality here. But that one, I, I, I have a bone to pick with that one. The next one we miss as well. Which of the following would help ensure proper reassembly of a serviced mobile device? Oh, man, no. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> the dust dude i okay i just i just brought it up right i just just right. hypothetically the dust? dust shouldn't really affect your ability to reassemble something unless but like you said it is a if it's a ton of dust it could so i think that's kind of a they just threw that Ooh. in there just to prevent people from getting perfect scores i feel like because that that's really i don't know okay here's where we missed all of our laser printer questions which step of laser printer imaging well, yeah, process right. requires troubleshooting if you have ghost images? So we said charging, and the answer was cleaning. Okay. Wait, which one? Which question is that? The uh, depleted toner question? No, ghost images. Next one, uh, toner falling off of a printed image, uh, printed copy. I said toner cartridge. The answer was fuser assembly. We answered it a little different. This is why you need to answer the same as me. We have to agree on answers in the future because you're you're looking at different. I got fuser assembly. Questions you got wrong. That's right. Uh, garbled characters on output pages may indicate a printing problem related to which of the following? I said calibration. The answer was printer driver. Are you kidding me? A freaking driver. Ah, uh, man. I was right about the DHCP one at least. So, hold on. There are two different so success ratios: seventy-six percent, but your percentage secured is eighty-five point seven one. Um, does this like make any sense? Maybe it's. I think because there's maybe like it's multiple, because it counts the multiple choice. Yeah. yeah well, the, when there's multiple them. answers and you get like two mm -hmm. of the three right, I guess it weighs them that way. So my raw score, if you just base it on did he get the question right fully or not, was seventy-six, which means I still passed. <laughs> I, I think will CompTIA note. does the, the simpler one where it's just like they'll give you a few points. Yeah. And then percentage. Yeah. So percentage skip was 85. All right. Well, that's um, that's not bad. It could have been a lot worse. Those printer questions at the end, they really tried to get us there. We haven't failed yet, yeah. Jeremy. I think that's that's really saying something. So you get degrees, baby. That's right. Hey, at this point, I'm happy with just passing because uh, we haven't really studied at all for these and we're just kind of relying on our industry knowledge and what little of it we, we might have <laughs> to get us through. And so far, it's worked out. So um, I'm happy with that result. I, I feel like we did fairly well. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to the next one. Dude, these are kind of fun. I mean, like, I just... Yeah. <laughs> I like knowing what I understand and what I don't. And this, is, this has been humbling. And it's also been pretty enlightening too. Hopefully it has been for, for our viewers as well, um, especially if you're younger, interested in, in taking tests like this, uh, getting certs before you uh, maybe take up a trade or go to college or uh, I don't know, try to land some job somewhere. Um, certs like these can come in handy. Um, it, I think of them like college degrees. Like sometimes you just have to have the paper in hand to even be considered for the job. And so, um, you know, maybe, maybe there's some value out there for other folks who might be interested in picking something up like this. I don't think I'm gonna, yeah, unless I have to, but I don't know. Jeremy, you have a few of them, right? Which ones do you have? Yeah, man. Um, I think I'm going to start a Discord. Um, not a Discord channel, but just a, what's it called? A text channel and your Discord, maybe? 
and see if we can get some people um, some help with certs. Because, I mean, like, it's super competitive with degrees, like, pay-wise. I mean, you can get one cert and be making, you know, $60,000 a year. Like, it's, it's possible. Like, these certs will get you a job. Wow. All right. Then, uh, with that in mind, yeah, maybe we'll get that going. You guys, be sure to check out our Discord server. It is free. It is public. It's linked in the video description. You can also take uh, some of these tests along with us if you want. We've linked this uh, little webpage here that has a bunch of different CompTIA tests um, and other tests as well, if you are interested. And uh, I think that's about it. Are we ready to get out of here? I think so. Let's do it. Uh, with our scores in hand, we have passed... <laughs> so we're ready to take test number three at some point here in the near future, depending on how the viewership goes. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more of this stuff, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching this part of the video. My name's Greg. His name is... Jeremy. That was such an epic plug. Thanks it's for... It's because you go, my name is. You go, my... <laughs> his name is... Well, you know let that I'm leading up to it, so just like, there shouldn't be as big a delay there, because then it just feels clunky to the viewer. I can edit it. No, then it's going to feel choppy. There's, there's a certain kind of harmony that you... Maybe your edits. That, yeah, maybe your edits feel you know, Thanks for learning with us. Thanks for running the end of the video, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Yep. I'm too stubborn to refilm.